Machiavelli is born to a family that opposed the ruling family in Florence, the Medicis. Lorenzo the Magnificent was the reigning Medici at this time in Florence, and Lorenzo supported the arts, and his era is regarded as a period of relative stability. He managed to somehow maintain peace between the various powers of Italy for his own advantage. As to those powers, there are five of them, the papacy in Rome, the aristocratic Venice, the kingdom of Naples, as well as Milan and the Republic of Florence. Machiavelli's family were Republican in their political sentiment, and they opposed the Medicis because, while the Medicis maintained the Republican form of government under their reign, in all practical matters they were autocrats. Machiavelli's father was a lawyer and a staunch supporter of the Republican form of government himself. Now, history is never as simple, of course, as saying that it was a period of relative peace, because during this period of peace there was still intermittent fighting, assassinations, and conspiratorial plots between these five major powers. Even Lorenzo's brother was assassinated during this period. After Lorenzo's death in 1492, same year that Columbus sailed the ocean blue, uh, Piero was the next Medici to take the reins of power, or I guess his name would have been pronounced Piero. But he found himself exiled in only a couple of years after taking charge. After that, a monastic named Savonarola almost succeeded in taking charge in the wake of all these events and attempted to create a theocratic government. He was also overthrown and burned at the stake. After all of these power struggles, the Republican government um, appoints Machiavelli to a post, a diplomatic post in charge of foreign and military affairs. So this is when Machiavelli is in government. In the wake of these somewhat violent, unpredictable changes in power. And during his time serving this post for 13 years, he went on numerous diplomatic missions, more than 20, visiting European leaders of the great powers. Unfortunately for Machiavelli, one day a French army entered the Italian peninsula bound for Florence, and the Florentines, looking for a strong leader to defend themselves, called for the Medici to return. And with the ascension of the Medici, Machiavelli's political ambitions were put to an end, and he was exiled. After this, Machiavelli writes a letter to Vittori, a friend, telling him of what his life is like now that he's been banished from the city and his career is done. I'm going to read most of this letter. I'm abridging it in a couple places in the interest of time, but it's a wonderful snapshot of what a day in someone's life is like 500 years or so ago, which I love, but... Also, Machiavelli is very evocative in his attempt at, again, bringing us along with him. So he writes in the year 1513, quote, I am living on my farm, and since my latest disasters, I have not spent a total of 20 days in Florence. Until now, I have been catching thrushes with my own hands. I would get up before daybreak, prepare the bird lime, and go out with such a bundle of bird cages on my back that I looked like Geta when he came back from the harbor with Amphitryon's books. I would catch at least two, at most six thrushes, and thus I passed the entire month of November. Eventually this diversion, albeit contemptible and foreign to me, petered out to my regret. I shall tell you about my life. I get up in the morning with the sun and go into one of my woods that I am having cut down. There I spend a couple of hours inspecting the work of the previous day and kill some time with the woodsmen who always have some dispute on their hands, either among themselves or with their neighbors. Upon leaving the woods, I go to a spring. From there to one of the places where I hang my bird nets. I have a book under my arm. Dante, Petrarch, or one of the minor poets like Tibullus, Ovid, or some such. I read about their amorous passions and their loves, remember my own, and these reflections make me happy for a while. Then I make my way along the road toward the inn. I chat with passers-by. I ask news of their regions. I learn about various matters. I observe mankind, the variety of its tastes, the diversity of its fancies. By then, it is time to eat. With my household, I eat what food this poor farm and my minuscule patrimony yield. When I have finished eating, I return to the inn, 
where there usually are the innkeeper, a butcher, a miller, and a couple of kiln workers. I slum around with them for the rest of the day, playing krika and backgammon. These games lead to thousands of squabbles and endless abuses and vituperations. When evening comes, I return home and enter my study. On the threshold, I take off my workday clothes covered with mud and dirt and put on the garments of court and palace. Fitted out appropriately, I step inside the venerable courts of the ancients, where, solicitously received by them, I nourish myself in that food that alone is mine and for which I was born, where I am unashamed to converse with them and to question them about the motives for their actions. And they, out of their human kindness, answer me. And for four hours at a time, I feel no boredom. I forget all my troubles. I do not dread poverty and I am not terrified by death. I absorb myself into them completely. And because Dante says that no one understands anything unless he retains what he has understood, I have jotted down what I have profited from in their conversation and composed a short study, The Prince, in which I delve as deeply as I can into the ideas concerning this topic, discussing the definition of a princedom, the categories of princedoms, how they are acquired, how they are retained, and why they are lost. End quote. So the letter, not only is it a great sort of framing for the background of Machiavelli's life, um, he tells us that it's the period when he composes his great work, and he composes it out of conversations with the ancients, with his favorite authors who preceded him. That's how he describes his interaction with them. Um, it's very interesting because it's not he's not describing it as a one-way communication that he's simply reading their words, that he's posing questions to them and they're offering up their answers in return. So in short, Machiavelli is a man who is knowledgeable of the world of politics and geopolitics, but The Prince is a work composed while in exile. It's composed as he draws on the friendship of the ancients as company and commits their lessons to memory. And he uses those lessons to interpret the events of his own time, to craft a narrative of his own time. He wishes to understand the political drama that has unfolded around him and which has landed him in the very exile he now experiences. Thank you for listening to that clip from the Nietzsche podcast. Please like and subscribe if you like what you hear. It really helps the channel out, and I post full episodes from the podcast here, as well as a lot of other content. You can also check it out on Spotify and Anchor.